Hi everybody, I'm Delia Colvin with Fly Right Pilots. Thanks for joining me today. If you'd like, like to see more videos like this one, go ahead and subscribe and click on the little bell so you're notified. All right, so today we're going to, what we're doing is we're going through a briefing. We're taking each piece of this briefing and we're going to go through it and see uh, what adverse conditions we can find in here. Because what I want you to do is not just go through and say, can I fly as you're looking at each one of the sections for your standard weather brief. Make sure you cover each one. There's a lot of people that tend to skip this en route forecast thinking it's okay to just go to the TAFs. The problem is, is that there's data in the en route forecast that you're not going to get in your TAFs. And the TAFs are my favorite tool. However, they're only valid for five statute miles around that airport. So make sure that you're checking all of these because they're all going to give you clues on what you may find along the route. All right, so right now we're looking at forecasts. And so as we look at forecasts, there's a couple of things we look at here. We look at the graphical forecast for aviation, which is now our en route forecast. We look at our terminal forecast and we look at our winds aloft. All right, so be sure you have next gen checked. Do not check the plain text. You, you need to learn. You can check that if you'd like. However, you really need to learn what you're you're looking at here. All right. So right here, we are in en route forecast. And that's what it's saying on the forecast, en route forecast right there. So here we go with this. And it's talking about clouds. Now, when it's talking about clouds, almost all the aviation forecasts are MSL. There's a couple of exceptions to those. METARs and TAFs are the only ones that are always AGL. They're above ground level. Why is that? Because the pilots flying above the clouds, they want to know if they can actually land at that airport. So uh, the METARs and TAFs with the, right in that airport environment are going to be AGL. Almost everything else, as you're flying along, you want to know what it's going to be MSL, and that's what it is. Now, this is fine. We're going to use this just because it's it's what we got. Um, but I want to show you something. We're going to enlarge this. All right. So here is our coverage. It ends at 2100, but we're still right in this vicinity. So we're going basically from here to here. Now, um, it, it actually doesn't look too bad and it's calling for clear. So if you looked at this, you might be hoodwinked because it's certainly not clear. There's a lot of stuff going on. We go on to this visibility and precipitation and look at this. Now, if you don't know what the symbol means, it means thunderstorms and rain showers. So that's what it's showing there. That is not my favorite graphical forecast. Uh, my favorite is to go to aviationweather.gov and go to tools, graphical forecasts, and here you go. Now, this is going to give up, bring up a big nationwide picture. However, I've already looked at this, so that's how I know it. So this is the graphical forecast. We're looking at clouds. Again, these are MSL. We're going to look at bases. And here we are for our route, and it's saying 8,000 overcast there, but pretty much looks clear along the route. And we're running right along the edge of that convective sigmat there for our route. We've, but we've got one north and we've got one west. Is that moving? Probably moving a little bit. So uh, here we can see that there are some clouds just north that are kind of that dark bluish. So those are going to be mostly looks like uh, up to 3,000 feet. However, here it's 8,000 overcast and we can probably get out of there. Remember this 8,000 is MSL. This airport I think is about 2,500 feet. I'm not sure. Asheville. And it's reporting a ceiling of 8,000. So that layer, if it was 2,500, is going to be 10.5, uh, right? And then it's called a layer instead of a ceiling. However, if we wanted to know what was going on with the ceilings, here's where we click. Now, again, you can zoom in. You can see flight categories. You can see ceilings and visibilities. You can see that they are forecasting for flight categories, pretty much VFR conditions, which is what it looked like with some rain showers. But let's look at the ceiling and see what it does. Doesn't, not much change, but you can see if you were up in this area, 
you'd be looking at some kind of low ceilings and some IFR conditions. Now, if you didn't know what this, this symbol meant, you could click on this right here and scroll on down. You can see it's thunderstorm, but it had a little more to it, right? That little dot on top. Thunderstorms, moderate rain. That's what that is. All right. Now then, let's get on to the forecast. Oh, by the way, while we're here, we might as well, well see what they're looking at for thunderstorm forecasts. And look at this. Right along this area, it is looking like there is scattered to numerous. A couple of areas of numerous, right? And now we're going to go in and look at the terminal forecast. Now, as I've said, this is my favorite forecast tool. However, that meteorologist is extremely limited on what they can say. Now, if you have ForeFlight, they have a great tool in the MOSS bulletins. MOSS bulletins are available to everyone, but guess what? Uh, they're, they're not decoded in most locations. And also, you're going to have to search through every location across the country unless you know specifically where there is one. The advantage of a MOS bulletin is that it is uh, comes out every it updates every hour. However, it is automated. It doesn't see what's going on to the west or to the east or the north or south. So you're going to have to just if, if you're looking within three hours, it's a pretty darn good forecast because it just got updated based on what it was looking at. It's using statistical data. It's called um, model output statistic. Leave it to the uh, engineers to name it. So model output statistic, MOS bulletins, they're great, great tools. And uh, you can take a look at them as long as they're within three hours, they're probably pretty darn accurate. The TAPS are my favorite tool. Sometimes that meteorologist didn't get a chance to update it or it didn't change significantly, but they are, they generally tend to do a pretty good job. However, Again, they are extremely limited on what they can say. So here's how you read this. Uh, and here we are down in the TAF. So when we looked at this forecast, by the way, we didn't fill this out, but let's just say, did it have a chance of thunderstorms? Yes, it did. Um, and that is going to cause problems for, and actually there was some indicators of some potential mountain obscuration also. And we could fill out most of these with that. Uh, with the thunderstorm chance. Okay, so here we are, and it's saying, it's highlighted in green. It's showing the time that we're departing, and it says uh, that we're leaving at on the 10th at 1725 Zulu. This is valid from the 10th at 16, or I'm sorry, at 18 Zulu to the 11th at 18 Zulu. And the winds are forecast 250 at 3. Visibility is unrestricted. Thunderstorms in the vicinity. Why is that red? Because that's a big warning. You got something that can be very, very hazardous. So um, I've seen it kill a lot of pilots, by the way, and almost all of them had their family members in their plane with them. So thunderstorms in the vicinity means that that is within five to 10 miles uh, of the airport. And 4,500 scattered cumula nimbus. This layer right over the airport is developing thunderstorms. Cumulo means heaps or piles. Nimbus means rain cloud. So there is a thunderstorm developing there. It says also between 10, the 10th at 19 Zulu and the 10th at 23 Zulu, uh, they're expecting visibilities five with thunderstorms, light rain, mist, and a ceiling of 4,000 broken in cumulonimbus. Now, what does that mean? We've got mountains just west of there miles west of there that are climbing to 5,000 feet. So we just there confirmed that there is some mountain obscuration. So that's what that tells me there. We don't know that it's over it, but it sure could be. Um, also, we've confirmed that there are thunderstorms in the area. And uh, let's see here. Not IFR conditions, but yeah, it's, that's about what it's looking like. All right, so when we get to Chattanooga, and there's nothing in between there, so unfortunately we're not going to get any others, they're forecasting when 260 at 5, visibility is unrestricted, thunderstorms in the vicinity again, and a ceiling of 6,000 
broken uh, cumulonimbus, so developing cumulonimbus. Um, I will tell you that these mountains here are some of the most volatile for developing thunderstorms. If you were between spring and fall, and it is uh, in the afternoon there, and you've got a chance of thunderstorms. I was uh, hiking one of these, hiked to the top. Completely blue skies. I hiked over the top of this ridge, uh, trying to figure out if I could get down that way. Found out I couldn't and realized within minutes that a CB was starting to form and I couldn't crawl back over there because I, I'd probably be killed. So that's just how fast they can form there. So use caution when you're flying over these mountains. If there's any kind of low pressure system, if there's any kind of frontal system down there, um, in the southeastern portion of the country, that is where it's most hazardous, all the way down to about mid-Georgia and all the way up to uh, the, the, the Tennessee border. It just gets very moist, very unstable. Again, if you have a low or a cold front in that area, count on thunderstorms as soon as you get some daylight heating and lasting through the day. Um, so this is, I mean, the, the main thing this is looking like is thunderstorms. Let's look at the Winds of Law forecast. Now, the Winds of Law forecast, we'd be looking for winds across the crest of these mountains at 20 knots. And so I'm looking at, and they are not 6,000, or they're not 20 knots or more. So that's looking pretty good. And we're going to be flying at this altitude. They're going to be out of the west, northwest, at about 9 to 13 knots. Really not too bad. Not too bad. And that, uh, some of you remember on the current conditions, that pretty much concurs with what we were looking at on the bad winds as well. So I'm going to say it doesn't look like turbulence other than we do have a chance of turbulence based on those forecasts for thunderstorms. So that's it for this video. On the next one, we're going to go into additional tools that you can use to evaluate this and, uh, and also the overview. The overview is the most important part of any briefing, and you'll see why when we get, it, get to it. Now then, I want to thank you for joining me. Please like and subscribe. And if you know someone that this could help, feel free to share it. You can also follow, follow us on Facebook and Instagram and be sure to join me on my weekly webinar. Uh, you can find the links to all of these down below. Look forward to seeing you there.